Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be talking about Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite, but this time we're going to be talking about progress toward supporting Linux. So the reason why I want to cover this is I've noticed a lot of reviews about the Snapdragon that went on back in June and some more that came out last month in July, and I'm still seeing them coming out every once in a while about talking about the laptops and people trying to get it to run on Linux and walking away, pointing their fingers, saying Linux sucks and it doesn't work. And so why? <laughs> well, if you remember my video back in April, if you saw that when I talked about Qualcomm, I had a video in there that was by the Qualcomm development team that was working on supporting their Snapdragon X Elite in Linux. Uh, upstream status, uh, we started off posting patches for these chips quite late into 6.7, so there was very little that got merged in 6.7, but we followed it up with 6.8, 6.9. So in the last couple of releases, there's been a decent amount of support that's already merged. We have uh, pretty much all the infrastructure pieces around clock, spin control, um, power domains, interconnect, all of these merged. There's uh, SMMU support, system cache. Uh, both the uh, reference devices that we use for our development, which is this, the CRD and another device, the QCP, both of these have support upstream. We have all the multimedia clocks merged, a bunch of fire drivers, and uh, the primary storage interface on these, which is NVMe or PCIe. Uh, we also have uh, the DSPs being brought out of Reset, uh, and uh, the firmware, firmware loaded on, on these for uh, some of the audio use cases. But this is, like I said, it's it's like uh, we are halfway there in terms of of having full Linux support for these. There's quite a lot of things that is missing, and that's primarily our focus going forward over the next few merge windows to get all of this support merged in uh, in mainline. Uh, so top of our list is uh, primary display, which is uh, over uh, EDP, and then uh, some of the power management things like getting the dynamic scaling working with CPU freq and memory uh, DCPS. DCPS stands for dynamic clock and voltage scaling. Uh, that's primarily the technique we use to scale the, the DDR as well as the caches. Um, and then uh, the low power modes through suspend resume, system-wide suspend resume, and then camera and video are the big uh, missing pieces for now. They're still executing to that roadmap, so I thought, well, Rather than have everybody get all disappointed and rush out, buy a bunch of Snapdragon laptops, and then try to get it to run on Linux, only to be met with, gosh, this doesn't work. Well, you know, there's good reasons for that, and so that's what we're going to talk about. But also, I'm going to update you on where things are right now. On uh, May the 13th, one of the developers, Elliot uh, Berman, uh, I think he's part of the Qualcomm team. I think he might be an independent, but... He made a video, and on that video, he was asking the community for support to help them. What they need is to be able to support multiple DTB trees because companies like Asus or Lenovo, they have a whole raft of different laptop lines. Like Lenovo has the Yoga, the X series, the T series, and on and on. So, And a lot of those have different drivers in them because they have different supported. So they needed to have multiple DTB support for Lenovo. And that's what they, they, he wanted to build was, I want to build a, a building block that's a Lego that these OEMs can take, incorporate, and make work with their stuff. Rajendra Nayak. He had, uh, he was he's another developer. I think he's also the, the uh, program lead from Qualcomm in this effort to support Linux. He's the one that gave the briefing back in April at uh, the Embedded uh, OS conference on what their roadmap was for uh, Linux support. So he and that blog talked about the overall progress, where they were, and some of the issues they have circum they have brought up, which is one of the ones that uh, Elliot, and he talked about Elliot Berman's uh, problem with uh, multiple DTBs. He also talked about some of the other areas that they were working on, like the signing uh, issue with the GPU. And he said, oh, if you want to track what we're doing in the Linux kernel, here's a search term, and I'll put that down below. 
you can go to the Linux kernel mailing list, put in the search term, and you can track what they're doing on each one of the builds. June the 2nd, there was another blog post by Qualcomm by uh, Sudarshan, uh, and I don't know how to pronounce his last name, so I'm not even going to try. But he said, all right, so I want to uh, shorten the Linux boot because right now we're waiting on all the big, see, this is why I think it's funny about Nimble. Is the big the big issue and the wait time is 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 initializing memory uh, in the Linux boot process. That's the thing that takes the most time. So to get around that, he's saying let's do a deferred memory initialization. Let's do some of it, but we need to bring in the kernel and the supporting utilities to bring the system up, and then as we need stuff, we'll initialize the memory in line with its use. June the 14th, uh, Pharonic's uh, blog posted a report based on the progress that was made by the Qualcomm and other developers and their commitment to have a fully working GPU supported by the end of August. So, and that they had hoped would be in time for the release of 6.11. So that hopefully they would make that bar, get the code inserted into 6.11 and have it stable enough, and that would finish off their work. June the 30th, both Pharonix and Tom's Hardware reported that Asus is working on Linux support for their laptop, for the Snapdragon laptop. The one that they're talking about is the Asus VivoBook S15. That's the one I went out and bought, and the reason why I did was because of this. Uh, that could very well be, now who knows, I mean, somebody could beat them, but that could very well be the first one supported on Linux. However, both those, uh, uh, both for the blog from Pharonix and the Tom's Hardware said, it's possible there may be key features that are missing or incomplete or broken uh, because they're rushing to get you know, it make the 611 deadline. As of July, the the free Drino driver. And is being inserted into Mesa has been, and that provides support for OpenGL. So with that, you have the X1 Elite GPU fully functional as a graphics processor for rendering. That, of, that support should be available in Mesa 24.2, provided the kernel driver makes it into the, the, the 6.11 kernel. If it doesn't, that could slip. So, yeah, you, you, it's good that you have support in Mesa, but you need the driver and the kernel for it to work. So you need both. So the, that's called the Galenium 3D driver, and that enables uh, the Snapdragon X Elite uh, GPU. And they said they would continue working on it and complete the support by the end of August. So there's still some remaining issues they have to deal with. So 610, there's patches that began to surface for specific laptop models. We have Tuxedo's announcement, and I talked about this in April. They're a maker of Linux laptops, and they've been around for a long time. They're working on a Snapdragon X series of laptops. I don't know how many, uh, but they're specifically designed to run Linux, so they'll come shipped with Linux. So these laptops are expected to be available by the end of 2024 is what they said. They, and then they added a note, hopefully in time for Christmas. It depends on what happens in front of them. Uh, I suppose since these are all the AI, the Copilot stuff, you know, Copilot doesn't have any problem running on Windows. I have the laptop. I've been testing it. Uh, and so I kind of want to talk about this a little bit. So Copilot has no problem running because that's all, all the transcoding and transformations are done in the cloud. None of that's being processed locally. Well, that worries me. I don't like that. Olama is what I tend to use, which is a project that was developed for Linux. Uh, they do have an experimental version for Windows. However, it's x86 only. So at the moment, they don't have an ARM driver, at least not one that I saw. I did install it. It runs really slow on... on yeah. <laughs> It was like uh, watching a 300 baud modem tra transmit. You know, it was like, it was a word, pause, word, pause, word, pause, word, pause. Yeah, so I got tired. I got bored of watching it, so I canceled it out before it answered my question. 
On Linux, they use the CPU unless it's an NVIDIA chip. And I do think they have support now for ARC uh, because I it was a few weeks ago, all of a sudden, Olama on the on the uh, Meteor Lake all of a sudden started running a little faster. And I was like, what happened here? And, so, and then I saw there was activity on the GPU. So I think they, they've turned that on. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this one on as my fault. So uh, I did put WSL on and I installed Ubuntu. I did 2204 at first, uh, and then I did 2404 uh, just to see how well they compared. And they ran okay. They weren't great. They weren't stellar. Uh, yeah, but I noticed that some of the code is x86. However, Ubuntu is ARM, so. The distro that gets installed under WSL is ARM, but there are still some components, looks like to me, that are running x86 code. So anytime on ARM, that get, that app, is like you, it calls in the translator, which that obviously is going to slow things down a bit. But then I inadvertently, not thinking, I just was, it was, I was late at night, I was in a hurry and saw there was an update and just hit update and then I looked again and it was the preview for 24H2 and I went uh oh <laughs> I never used to install previews of anything Microsoft did because that was usually spelt disaster and yes it did uh, all of a sudden WSL got flaky uh, things would slow down and then speed up and then sometimes it would just stop processing especially I was trying to do a benchmark on it with the Pharonix test suite and it would compile sorta and then stop. And it would just kind of sit there and it wouldn't do anything. There was nothing going on. There was no activity on the processor. I'd cancel it out, start it up again, and then and then I'd have to clear all of the locks that were in the and that it, that Pharonix test suite uh, inserts as it's building itself out. So anyway, long short of it is it does the Pharonix test week doesn't work now. So and there are other problems that I'm having with WSL. So I'm just gonna I think probably pull that uh, that patch out and restore back to a save point. Once Linux has the support for the hardware, Linux is going to be in better shape than Windows is because there are a lot of applications on Windows that haven't been compiled for ARM yet. Whereas on Linux, the opposite is true. And you can thank the Raspberry Pi for that because it was the, the efforts that they went through to get ARM support on Linux. They got the developers to recompile their code for ARM. And that provided us with a huge number of packages in our base. The last time I checked, it was around 70 plus thousand packages on Debian. So for that were ARM, that supported ARM 64. The, I think the release of the Debian image uh, may, and accompanied with the development of this Lego environment that they're creating to allow you know OEMs to add on their secret sauce to differentiate themselves from their competitors, I think that's gonna. I think that's gonna help a lot in moving things forward. That Debian image, unless you have a red laptop from Qualcomm, is useless to you. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna do anything. So it is a specific release for those laptops to help the developers that were are working on this project to get a development environment up and running. I think we've seen enough videos about the architecture of the Snapdragon, so I didn't want to add to that. Uh, so I'm not going to do a review of the laptop until it's fully running Linux. So I'll do that re that uh, review of that laptop when it's running Linux. I don't think I need to add to it running on Windows. Uh, I would like to show it in its in, in in its form on what I do here on this channel. So I don't know. Maybe third quarter, maybe fourth quarter might be when that happens, but I'm not committing to a date because I don't have any control over when everything gets done in the kernel and when everything gets debugged in Mesa and all that stuff. So, But keep an eye on Asus and Qualcomm and Tuxedo's efforts. Uh, look for to see if any of the others like System76 start 
supporting a Snapdragon. Uh, I haven't checked. I don't know if they already have addressed that issue or not. Don't know. But I think uh, ARM on Linux is, uh, is a head start. So, I mean, obviously I'm running ARM on Linux. That's all I had. And I wanted to thank my uh, Patreons and also my channel members. Thank you for supporting me and making a lot of this craziness that I do possible. Uh, I sure appreciate your efforts to help in that and, and helping me be able to do these things. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and share it out with your friends. That gets the word out to other people that there's something. And hopefully before they jump in and, try and get frustrated trying to run Linux on these platforms. So basically, let's put this in English. If you run Debian, not going to work. If you run Ubuntu, not going to work. If you run Fedora, not going to work. If you run Arch, not going to work because you don't have full support for the hardware in the kernel. And until you do, it ain't going to be complete. So all you're asking for is just be frustrated. So save yourself the effort. Don't go there. Not yet. <laughs> Hope to see you all soon. Bye for now.